All right, we're good? We're good. Welcome to Vlog Thursday. Hi, I'm back. He's back. Yay. This guy. Or maybe not. I don't know. How'd it go last week? I forgot. He doesn't even watch it when he's not here. He's like, I wasn't part of it, therefore I will not watch it. Basically, yeah. I, I wasn't even going to share it, but I was like, I probably should. Probably should share it, <laughs> even if he wasn't part of it. I did I, I did not get a chance to watch it, but I did like the, the screenshot, though. Steve just chilling, legs up. Like, uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> and you actually got Kyle in. I was very surprised yeah. that Kyle even. Kyle's not, he, he wasn't sure. He, he kept debating whether or not he wanted to just have his back to the camera and sitting like where he sits <laughs> in the other side. So I just said, we'll just come over there. And he didn't want to be in here. And uh, because of the timing of everything that was going on last Thursday, we didn't start Vlog Thursday until after the store was open. So we're like, well, we'll just see if any customers yeah. come in. <laughs> so, But more importantly, I have my pumpkin spice latte. Oh, yeah, and we did reverse this. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. My, my, my task this morning was taking uh, children to orientation in school. One of my children is still there. She's right over there. Yeah, tell her to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I passed Timmy Hose and didn't pass my favorite Big B's, but I will... I will. I, I enjoy Timmy Hose too. They're not bad. It's just, it just shows you how the best laid plans of mice and men, right? I specifically went to Big B because I'm like, oh, we can match today. I'll go to Big B so that we have the same. Nope. <laughs> yep. Best laid plans. Yeah. But I also wanted a pumpkin spice latte because I'm basic. Yeah. And I admit that. Yep. It's, I own it's it. what we enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Why not do the things we enjoy? <sighs> So like good. Pumpkin spice lattes. So, so good. Oh, I, I got to grab a thing. Okay. That we forgot about. Oh, the shirts, right. We are supposed to talk about shirts. I'm too lazy to put it on at the moment. I forgot I was going to put it on before. We'll put them on next time. These shirts say free NAS. And the reason they say free NAS and IX systems is because this is our whole plan. We really don't like free NAS. We just kept mm -hmm. playing with it and deploying it to all these clients in hopes to finally get free yeah. shirts. Yeah, and it's finally <laughs> starting to pay off. We got our free swag. This is all it was. <laughs> Um, no, because of our uh, FreeNAS, the people over at IX Systems that uh, implement this, they enjoyed our video of destroying FreeNAS, which we've been trying to come up with some more videos on that um, to try to get, you know, to do some more data dis uh, destruction. We're trying, trying to get the bad memory thing to work. I actually shot a video trying to get the bad memory thing to work. We kind of corrupted the FreeNAS system, and I say kind of because the whole thing doesn't work anymore. So it didn't exactly corrupt as much as that computer quit working. And hmm. we've really been trying with the bad memory thing. Every time I put bad memory, even when I'm running a scrub or any of the other things that are supposed to crash free NAS, it crashes the OS. So I have not been able to simulate. Now, I know a lot of people have sent me that they've had this problem where they have bad memory and that's what caused the free NAS system to get corrupted. I have just had the hardest time because it keeps doing an OS level crash. And we're talking, I, I've put lots of RAM in, I've done a lot of stuff, and it's so hard. First, we can't get it installed with bad RAM at all. N always fails. So we were able to get some bad RAM to do it, but it just kept, it, we could never get any thorough testing because we spent all day rebooting the stupid computer because it would just lock up. Or it will not really lock up, it, it, the equivalent of a blue screen in FreeBSD when it would just uh, kernel dump and wouldn't accept any more commands. So I was never able to get the result of I'm trying to corrupt the hard drive because every time the memory had an error, we would get a kernel error and I couldn't get the computer to do anything more. We'd reboot it and it would come up fine. And so I was never able to get the corruption done. And what they are right though, when you initiate the scrub uh, of the hard drive is what would cause the kernel dump because it wouldn't use all the memory until you did that. And once you did that, then it would just dump. And so it never really destroyed the hard drive. So we never really, we didn't finish publishing that video because it was like, it was a pain in the butt. Plus the computer we used was such a pain in the butt because it just didn't boot all the time. It was random. It just mm. said, I'm just not coming on, even with good memory in it. Uh, so that was, <laughs> yeah, that was a problem. Because the bad memory on newer motherboards just doesn't work. It just says it's bad and it won't mm -hmm. count it and it stops. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but they drew us a shark, the little logo. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. And, uh, a handwritten so, note, folks. And That's a, yes, on a, loose leaf paper. Yes, a loose leaf paper. Now, they actually sent this a little while ago, and there was an incident with the box. And uh, the box got delivered to our Detroit address, but not to the Detroit suite. So I, oh. I actually purposely don't have the Detroit suite on there, and it's for retail reasons, because we don't want people thinking that's where the retail location. We said it's not. We said it's only business-only office. 
but we purposely kind of omitted this week, so we don't want mail going there. And I just did not tell the free ass people that when they said we sent you some shirts, they just grabbed the Detroit address. Our Southgate address is where you want to ship things to because we mm. have the complete address on there. So when you send us shirts and swag, send it to the Southgate address, mm -hmm. 14140 Pennsylvania Road, Southgate, Michigan, 48195. Yes, because that's a single level building that we have right here in the beautiful city of Southgate. So. Big signs on it and everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it brings up to an, uh, an email I got from someone, and it it's a psychology thing at the same time as it is a way things are doing. It is a psychology of it. Okay. So people say, Tom, you seem veil it email. You seem to have a lot of success when others seem maybe have not had success on running some of these uh, enterprise applications and things like that on consumer hardware. And I said that's where the concept breaks down very quickly. So I've been in the computer industry for 22 years, and this is the psychology part of it. I have let go of the notion of I've got a phone from XYZ company and it was bad. Therefore, every product from XYZ company is bad. Mm. And that is, a, that is a hole that technicians just fall into all the time. I, I can't ever, maybe there's other industries that are like this and I'm just too deep into the tech one. But I will tell you, I meet opinionated techs and there's already some of you probably watching it know those gray beard techs. They're like, oh yeah, they once had a thing that worked and it's the only thing and it's the only best thing ever. Mm -hmm. I'm never coming off of this old operating system because it's perfect, you know, and they, they lack any concept of progress and how that relates to the motherboards and things like that. So consumer hardware has long been problematic. It failed. We used to replace memory all the time. That was a common thing. <clears throat> and I started out at the end of the SIP era, for those who know what type of memory that is, uh, then into the SIM era. And memory, we used to have, and if you remember these things, old memory testers that you would plug in physical devices outside the computer. You didn't test the memory in the computer, you tested it with memory <laughs> testers. I mean, it's like the tube testers. Like the, Anyone knew is like, what? But because of that, and just the engineering and the levels of things, but then we had the, the capacitor debacle that didn't affect the server world because they never used that formula. Uh, well, it's a little bit, but then the consumer hardware was very much affected by that. All these iterations and generations later, consumer hardware today is so much like the server hardware of only a few years ago. And it just doesn't have those failure rates that it used to have. So because it's so much more reliable, it's, la it's not that I'm having success. I'm just using new hardware that just has much, much lower failure rates uh, based on the motherboards we choose and things like that. So there's the entire concept and it's a psychology. Some people say, but it says consumer. The areas become super gray for those things. It's not like this is the mm -hmm. pro version. That's It's not always as black and white anymore. So well, things have gotten cheaper, easier to manufacture, faster to manufacture, right? So And we get better at manufacturing. Just mm -hmm. overall, there's been a lot of progress made and things are more reliable than ever. It's true. It's very, very true. So it's it's just an interesting concept. So mm -hmm. I, it is still about choosing it. And there is, when the budget allows, you know, and this discussions come up a lot of times. So. Your data needs to be on more than one place at a time. That is a, a huge thing. So you should have a replicated copy on site and a replicated copy copy off site, and then revisions of it at both locations. That's just, mm -hmm. just standard principles of backup. But if I spent my entire budget building the ultimate server that should never fail, but I still have now no more budget to build a second replicated copy on site. I didn't really improve the customer. I may have lowered the risk by using higher grade hardware, but I didn't eliminate the risk that they need of doing that. So you, if the budget says, look, I only have $4,000, $3,000 to spend. That's all I can spend. We need to get this thing done so we can grow as a company so we can have more money later and upgrade. Then we go, okay, here's the best solution. Build this rate array on you know decent equipment but don't, uh, you know, but then build another machine that copies it so we can have two copies of everything with revisioning on it. Uh, that's a lesser machine, but it keeps a duplicated copy and then still have our offsite backup copy. I've now taken that budget and created a better system. Yeah, you're not, you're, you're doing them a disservice by creating the un corruptible or the un, the uncrashable server, right? That Titanic was an unsinkable ship. Right. 
but, but then it's still the argument sync. is using the old servers. And one of the problems I, I really, well, the old servers are such power hogs. What it will cost them in electricity, they will not save. The you, electric bill goes up, everything goes up. And being old servers, it's harder to find parts for them. When you use consumer hardware, it's really easy to find parts. I can go grab a motherboard from Micro Center and have a server running the same day. Not to mention, I have some motherboards on the shelf right now. Uh, by the way, we're lucky Micro Center's down the street from us, so it's like, it's an easy thing. That's a relative term down the street. Down the street, about 45 minute drive. It's a, down the freeway. Down the, up freeway. the freeway. Up the freeway. Up the freeway. Yeah, and with traffic, it sucks. We go at night, but <laughs> welcome to Michigan. True. That's true, yeah. Well, luckily they're open till, how late are they open? Are they? Uh, they're open until nine. Yeah. yeah, I thought they were opening so, later than that. With all these things Whatever. being said, that is how the rationale. Now, I like really high-end stuff, and we have a lot of clients that we put those in. You know, we did that medical place, which unfortunately, like I said, when they started putting all their hardware in, we couldn't film there anymore. And we just did a chemical factory, which has some really nice equipment we put in. Uh, and we, it, there's all these little things going on like this. So it's not like we're not using high equipment. It, just if the budget allows it. We're uh, finishing up a project for a client that they built one hell of a server. And I mean, the reality is when I build a server like that, it's just for, it, we just get a Dell because it's easier and Dell has a five-year warranty and a lease agreement. Uh, they have a super low lease payment with a $1 buyout after five years. It's it's costing them so little for this <laughs> server that has a sticker price of seven grand. Yeah. So, and because they were able to negotiate with Dell's finance um, on some of the stuff, because they got that and they got a bunch of computers, why, why would we buy them? You know, we just help spec out the server and we're setting it up for remote access, uh, which I might try to figure out a way to do a review of this. I set them up with Duo Security um, and it's just so nice. The If you haven't heard of Duo, they're a pretty amazing company uh, that's kind of expanded very rapidly, filling in the space of two-factor authentication for things that need two-factor where the companies haven't wrote it. I'm looking at you, Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> like, why does RDP and Microsoft not have normal two-factor? This is like just a missing thing. Mm. So, anyways, that's, yeah, that's a great stuff. So, I do have a lot of reviews in the pipeline, but all the things related to deploying all these servers have kept me really busy. Uh, and because I kind of muddled through in, in not a concise fashion. <laughs> what? of setting these things up occasionally. Um, I didn't make a video about setting up a server 2016 with RDP like I want to. Hmm. But if you watch me do it, sometimes it is a, oh man, this and this and this. Uh, so like I engineered it and I got it all done, but it's just, yeah. Maybe it's we'll not as exciting for me to watch. Maybe it is, maybe you guys really, so Tommy should really do a video we'll on do that. Some, we'll do some insert cuts to like dancing and we'll have a musical number of some kind. Just you know, yeah. spice it up a little bit. If you watch me work, there's Google in one window, and then I'm doing the thing in the other. How do I? I got like some step-by-step -step Googled instruction in one side. No joke. He, I, I still read instructions, but this, uh, yeah, this here is a uh, test board that we use for some virtualization stuff I'm working on. Uh, we may be migrating everything to Zen. I've been testing a lot with it, and gonna do. I'm gonna do a Zen video for sure uh, for the virtualization. But yeah, that's this is on my project list. Uh, we need something. We're probably gonna build with the Ryzen. We're gonna build a high-end system. So that's kind of a fun thing that I got as a project. Uh, we're gonna move all of our stuff over, but I need something so I can start doing. I think there's probably enough people asking for some of the videos on Windows Server stuff. We, you know, I'm a very big Linux guy, and I love sharing all the Linux stuff. The reality is. I, you know, what do I do in my day job? Deploy servers for clients that can't run Linux stuff because their app was written for Windows. No, we, so. <laughs> we just spent 10 minutes talking about consumer grade products and yeah. whatnot. You have to include Microsoft in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So as much as we run a Linux stack and everything in house, it's like, that is, that is quite a. That it balances like really yeah. well. That's like really cool. So, yeah. anyways, <laughs> our own fascination with this for like a spin is pretty cool. <laughs> so, anyways, back to back to actual reality. Yeah. Yes, there's videos coming on that. Uh, I may do some Microsoft videos. Uh, oh, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, and my podcast is uh, uh, that's some other podcast that I do. We just interviewed one of the Microsoft developers for the uh, Azure app. So I thought about maybe I'll do some Azure videos. Uh, I didn't find a lot of them, and I'm like, I wonder if there's probably a demand for this. And because I'm actually interviewing the people, I tested them. And now I, I don't really have any Azure deployments myself for what we do. Most of our stuff is on-prem equipment. Even though we do virtualization, everything's generally on-premise or in the enterprise level that we work with with some of our clients, their vendor hosts it in whatever cloud platform they want. 
So we don't usually deal directly with spinning up the servers, but we're we're getting more into doing that. Uh, so I've been looking at that. So I may do some Azure videos, but the uh, interview we did with uh, Nasdem, Nasdem Lala, I think was his name. Super nice right. guy. Uh, the interview went really well. We had a lot of uh, technical questions, especially because the other co-hosts on the podcast, uh, some work in compliance level industries where we had to ask a lot about the data store and stuff. Yeah, that's the one. Hold on, Corey, come walk around here behind us real quick. <laughs> By the way, this is what it's like working with Tom all day. All shiny thing. Hey, come here. Yeah. You have and no head. Squat yeah, down. Yeah, squat down so you can wave at the crowd. Here's Corey, yeah. everybody. Corey snuck in and he's gathering. There's actually was a big pile of stuff that Corey's going to go install now. Absolutely. Yep. We're going to do a what it's like to work at Lawrence Systems video, and everyone's going to be part of it. Brace yourself. I got home at 1.20 in the morning. See, he get home at 1.20 in the morning. He's That's here. the dedication that he has. <laughs> he does. He worked until <laughs> 1 o'clock in the morning he to did. make sure. Make them dollars, right? Got to hustle them dollars. Mm -hmm. Actually, look, what time was the text from you? 12.40. Dollar, dollar yeah. bills. Yep. Well, like yep. That, that's just 12, how Corey rolls. Yes. At 12.09 is when, and, me, well, I, and I replied, so that's when he finished one of the jobs you're working on. Yeah. Where It's no joke. Corey likes working at night. I haven't ruled out the possibility that he's part vampire. That's, yeah. And I'm, not, I'm not saying he is. I'm not saying he isn't. Yeah. But he could be. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't sparkle like a vampire, though. He does not sparkle. I hear that's in. So, uh, Vampires don't sparkle. I'm just going to go ahead and put that out no there. Robert you are no Robert Pattinson, <laughs> sir. No one will ever mistake you for Robert Pattinson. But that's a video I want to work on. We're going to uh, turn the camera on every individual employee without me there, and I'll let them say something. And then I'm going to decide how I want to edit it. Like, will I even watch it, or I'll just string them all together? I'll let Marvin like just string them, whatever you guys say, and then I'll watch it on YouTube. So I'll release it to you guys, and <laughs> a then reaction go, wow, video. they said that. We'll have a reaction. Yeah, we'll have a reaction video of me watching. Well, like, we should do like an undercover boss thing. You should dress <laughs> up in <laughs> some other costume and pretend well, to be somebody else. Yeah, if we were a bigger company, it would work. Instead, we will we will just <laughs> let you guys record things and publish it on YouTube, and then I watch it on YouTube. <laughs> that sounds fun. We'll, we'll do like a confessional <laughs> booth. Like, is, is Real World still on? Is that show still on? We'll do we'll do it in a Super Mario bathroom. Yes. We'll do a confessional. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That would be funny. Yeah. We should cut this off though cuz we we all have stuff to do. So we all have stuff been to do. We've babbling on. Uh yeah, as much as I preach it all the time and once again history repeats itself and I repeat myself. Uh there's a server over there it's running some type of diagnostics. Uh turns out they wanted to run the backups themselves in <laughs> yeah or something. The other IT company you know, managed it for them, and no one ever stopped to test it. And managed. if you have an, uh, an untested backup, you just have some hopeful thinking. Well, it turns out they backed up last in May of 2015. September yep, just checking. of 2017, is that right? Yeah, so, yeah, just about. We're last day of August, so okay, pretty much so September. They're, they're missing a couple years with the data May if we can't. of 15? May of 2015. Wow. Yeah. So, and wow. they discovered that when they tried to restore it, that's why it's now here, and we're working on recovering it. Uh, once again, has a rate array, has all the right things. Uh, it's c completely messed up, and we're seeing what we can do with it. But it does have a rate array. It's it's a redundant drive. Oh, by the way, enterprise hardware. It is an HP ProLiant top end server with you know 24 gigs of ECC memory. Like this is not a. Uh, it's got a Xeon processor. It's all the things that uh, everyone wants to harp on me about. Like, like oh, you got to use enterprise. This is yeah. This is top enterprise, and it's corrupted, and it's sitting on my desk because I didn't have a backup. So. Yeah. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Their budget would have better been better allocated to buying mm, a consumer. Yes. And paying for a really high quality backup. Point proven. <laughs> thank so. you. Thank you. The defense rests. Yeah. Before we leave, one more thing. Annika, come over here. Don't give that look. I give any look I want. I'm a teenager. Yep. That is a valid point, actually. Am I short enough to be in front? You'll need to squat down uh, a little might bit know. too. Yeah. So. Well. I gotta. Deal with my daughter, but I told her she could be on the vlog. She's she counts her dad's credibility based on number of subscribers. I have. No, that's fine. That's, that's that's fine. I think it's good. Like you're not a cool dad until you have at least many subscribers as the YouTubers I like. Well, how many subscribers do you have? Well, I watch PewDiePie, so yeah, no, I don't you, have any you. subscribers. Well, then. Well, I, I don't post any videos. The, well, you should. The level of your father's pride in you depends on how many subscribers uh, you have. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he'll, it's, that's how he Honestly, motivates. I really you know? don't care. Be like, oh, you're at 
yeah. hundred. I could be a, a hated child and be like, cool, whatever. But I was like, hey, how many of the other kids you go to school with have dads on YouTube at all? So. <laughs> well, their dads are never home, so it doesn't oh. really matter. Well, anyway. I'm a home dad. Yeah. Ouch. So. Ouch. We just, oh, things are getting real. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Corey's already wow. making faces at us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Um, all as of today, I know there's well over nine thousand yeah. one hundred. There's a lot of you. That is awesome. We'll be, we'll be about at ten thousand pretty soon. Yes. Uh, cool. More videos coming. We have a three day weekend holiday coming up here in America. So America. Uh, America. So maybe I'll get a couple more videos done on Monday because even though the business may be closed, I usually come in for that's, videos. That's Tom. That's what Tom does. Yeah. I love making this stuff. And I have it's, all the stuff that I've started, but because I've actually had to work. <laughs> it's Labor Day, so Tom will be hard at labor making I'll be, videos. I'll be hard at labor making videos. Some people are barbecuing, but I'm also here at 6.30 every morning. And we're recording our podcast still this weekend because that doesn't stop. Except this morning. Well, that's because I had kids. Well, just Kids, saying. children. I rolled I rolled <laughs> up and I was like, really? Not here? Well, I, still, <laughs> I still, you know, said he was late. because. Yeah, but I still beat him here, though, yeah. by like two minutes. <laughs> I am not More the like benchmark. <laughs> yeah, listen, go back over there. Go back over there. Go. Bye. No. See ya. <laughs>